Now most of the world might be on lockdown, but the relentless pace of mountain bike tech hasn't slowed one bit. In the last few weeks, we've seen an avalanche of new products unveiled to the public. Remember, this is normally a key period in the sales calendar of the bike industry. And with production schedules and lead times difficult to change at the last minute, there is still an air of business as usual. Now, whether this lasts remains to be seen. Of the new products recently released, nothing has created more of a stir than the new Fox 38. Intended for the rigors of enduro racing and the growing demand for heavy duty e-bike components, this new fork may mark the start of a trend for girthy suspension. Will we see anything like Bullet Brothers bloated old Zizix forks return? Who knows? And while those chunky stanchion tubes are stealing the headlines, that's only half the story. Ridges running up the lower legs increase air volume to prevent the fork from ramping up too much as pressure builds. In addition, bleed valves just like those found on the 40 let you release excess pressure as the internals heat up. There's also a floating axle mount that improves alignment, new VVC damping and an elliptical steerer tube. The new fork is available in 160 to 180 millimeters of travel for both 27.5 and 29 inch wheels in a variety of offsets. A recent social media posting by Sam Hill suggests that RockShox might have its own mega fork in the pipeline. But for now, the suspension giant has unveiled a new debonair spring that's fitted to all its Lyric, Pike, Yari and Revelation forks. Better still, if you already have one of the aforementioned models, you can upgrade to the new design by switching just a couple of parts, costing £26. The new spring moves the piston in relation to the dimple that equalises the positive and negative air pressures. This reduces the influence of the negative air spring, meaning that the fork doesn't get sucked as deeply into the stroke and maintains a more elevated dynamic ride height. One bike brand with a unique approach to building carbon frames is Gorilla Gravity, and it has a new model out called the Narvana. What makes this Colorado-based manufacturer so special is that it molds its own carbon frames using an automated layup process that reduces labor time and brings down prices. Another way of making its bikes more affordable is by using a single modular front triangle. Now other brands also do this across different wheel sizes to varying degrees of success, but Gorilla Gravity takes it one step further, allowing you to customize the travel and application. Effectively, by buying different seat stay tuning kits, you can enjoy a quiver of bikes with just one frame. The Narvana gets 160 millimeters of rear wheel travel with a 170 millimeter fork. It runs 29 inch wheels and a sub 64 degree head angle, and the reach can be adjusted by 10 millimeters with reversible headset cups. Best of all, the frame alone can be purchased direct from Gorilla Gravity for £1,950. While SRAM and Shimano continue to battle for outright drivetrain supremacy, an increasing number of smaller brands are developing interesting alternatives. Fresh on the block is Microshift's Advent X drivetrain. It uses a 10 speed 11 to 48 cassette using evenly spaced sprockets. Weighing a reasonable 424 grams, it fits standard spline free hub bodies and combines with Microshift's own underbar thumb shifter and clutch mech for an incredible $167. That's around £140 at today's exchange rates. YT brings manga influence cool to the cross country category with the Samurai Sword Sharp Izzo. Taking a leaf out of Scott and NS's design books, the Izzo strongly resembles both the Spark and Synonym TR in profile as well as running a similar integrated remote compression adjust to firm up the suspension for climbing. With 29 inch wheels, 130 millimeters of travel and a lightweight carbon frame, this thing promises to be as fast as a bullet train and as stealthy as a night ninja. On a similar tip, Kona has a brand new Hey Hey that aims to bridge the gap between XC and Trail. In order to make room for a second bottle cage, the linkage has been reconfigured beneath the top tube. 
It has also been tweaked to eke out more travel and the new Hey Hey now gets 120 millimeters up from 100. In fact, the whole frame has been beefed up, although the Hey Hey still runs pivotless flex days to save weight and reduce costs. There are two models in the range, the CRDL and CR, costing £5,249 and £3,799 respectively. Many would argue that Evil's ironically named following was in fact the original Short Travel 29er Shredder, setting the pace and pulses racing in a sector of the market that got short shrift from most aggressive riders when it was launched in 2015. Well now you can't move for imitators, there's a new version of the following. Confident it got the recipe right first time round, Evil has barely tweaked the seasoning for the new bike. There's a steeper seat angle, slightly longer reach and a super boost back end. But Evil promises that same skateboard handling that gave the first incarnation such a cult um, following. Two new wheel sets hit the market recently at opposite ends of the price scale. For £429, Hunt has announced its e-enduro wheels and they're designed to handle the extra abuse dished out by an e-bike. You get 37mm wide rims with thicker walls and beefier spokes and axles complete the package. For a few dollars more, okay a lot more, there's the new NV AM30 foundation wheels, but at £1,800 a pair, they're a grand cheaper than anything else in the range. You still get a high-tech carbon rim with broad, hookless sidewall and moulded spoke holes laced to Industry 9 hubs, but you only have to sell one kidney rather than two. Finally, we can't finish without mentioning the new electrifying Forestal Sirion. Adding to the growing list of diet e-bikes, this young upstart from the owners of Production Privé looks like it could be a genuine game changer. Lightweight at 17.5 kilos and with 29 inch wheels, enduro travel and geometry and a slick display integrated into the top tube, it gets a 60 newton meter motor that should feel considerably more punchy than specialized Turbo Levo SL. Of all the bikes we've seen so far this year, this is the one we're most excited about riding. So that's just a brief look at some of the products released over the last few weeks. And we haven't even covered Kotick's new Rocket Max or the Privateer 161. Thanks for watching and please let us know in the comments below what new tech you're most excited about.